today we have some good stuff for you today. Um, how many of you really get stressed during the holiday season? Oh. You know, for whatever reason, <laughs> no. you're stressed because you don't know if you're going to get the right gift. Might have family members that you will be around that maybe you're not too fond of or may not be too fond of you. And then you're trying to do everything all by yourself. So today, we thought, man, this would be really nice to have someone come in to teach us how to deal with that stress. So today we've got um, Tim Edwards, who will talk about the financial part of how to do the budget and how not to get over your head and worry about your debt in January when it, everything's over and you're back to normal. He's with Orion, so he's going to talk to us about that. And then we've got Miss Allison Story, who's going to talk to us about... Um, Allison, I'm sorry, Atkinson. Mm -hmm. Allison, I'm sorry. That's fine. She's going to be with Southwest EAP, and she's going to talk to us about the mental part of stress, how to deal with it on that end. So, and then at the very end, I will show you some medica meditation techniques that might be healthy uh, for you to do when you're at your desk or whatever, if you've just got five minutes or so, something that will help you. So we're trying to attack the mind. We're trying to attack your billfold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're trying to attack... Uh, you know, the physical part of it so that we can deal with this stress. And we're going to learn a lot of interesting things from the, from today, okay? So we're going to welcome now Miss Allison with SWEAP, all right? Yes. Thank you, guys. Hi. Oh, okay, sure, you can clap. It's <laughs> a great start. Um, hi, everyone. I see some familiar faces because I've been south with Southwest EAP for a while, and so I've been out here training for various reasons. So, hello. Um, we're your employee assistance program. If you don't know about us, we're a free mental health benefit for you and your household. All of the employees of the city get free short-term counseling. It's confidential. It's just a separate benefit they offer you guys because, as she was saying, they know there's a lot that goes into a person and they want to make sure you have resources for all of these different things. So today they asked me to specifically talk about holiday stress, which is in itself a funny phrase <laughs> because it's one thing that people think of as inherently bad and one thing that people kind of usually have a positive opinion of right in the same word. So first of all, I'm going to ask for your participation just a little bit. What do we look forward to? during the holidays? What's the big thing? Being off work, having a day, being with your family, eating, lots of food, yes, lots of food. What else is something to look forward to? Gifts, time off. Decorations. Decorations are very pleasing to the eye, absolutely. So there's a lot of good stuff inherently. Yes, children laughing. I feel like you're quoting a Christmas song. Very good. <laughs> okay, so she's just really in it. All right, so that's right. And there's a lot of really, really good positive things. But all of those things that we love sometimes just carry their own stuff. Like Gail said, it's family. We love our family. Some of our family we love to death bring their own stress with them. They carry it over their shoulder like a purse, and it comes right into your house, and you all of a sudden have to deal with it. And Sometimes we forget that some things like that are going to be hard, and so we just go in um, kind of not prepared for it, if that makes sense. So you definitely want to be able to keep that positive focus as much as possible. Your brain trains itself. If you're thinking negatively about something, you're more likely to think negatively about it continually. If you can have a positive shift there, you're more likely to have your brain help you go that way. Um, so when we think about that, like I said, stress, already covered that. Stress comes with the holidays, it's a part of it. Uh, and that's okay, and I think a lot of people get very nervous about it, because like I said, it feels like it's inherently bad. But it's really a natural process that comes with life. Even things we are looking forward to, good, wonderful things, like the holidays, like moving to a house we've always wanted, like a promotion we've been working towards. They're great, they're positive, but they bring their own stress because it's change. And so we know it's different, we know it's gonna be out of the normal routine, so there's a lot of ways we can get off track. And if you're thinking about that on the front end, it'll little, be a little easier to kind of anticipate what your needs are gonna be. So if you picked up a handout, there's 20 quick questions, run through this stress test and see what your number is gonna be. I'm gonna read them out loud while we're doing this. First one's a toughie and it feels a little loaded. Do you frequently neglect your diet? Gail touched on this, do you frequently try to do everything yourself? Do you frequently blow up easily? Seek unrealistic goals? Fail to see the humor in situations others find funny? 
get easily irritated, make a big deal of everything, complain that you're disorganized. I'm guilty of that one. Keep everything inside, neglect exercise, also a big guilty of that one too because when we're off of our routine, it's easy to fall into that. Have few supportive relationships, not get enough rest, get angry if you're kept waiting, it has to do with your patience tolerance. Ignore stress symptoms, frequently put things off until later, think there's only one right way to do something. Fail to build relaxation into every day, spend a lot of time complaining, race through the day, or feel unable to cope with all that you have to do. So I know I ran through that pretty quick, but no one's getting graded on this. You don't have to pass them up to the front when you're done. It's just to get, yeah, no, extra credit. It's just to give you an idea of kind of where you fall. And it's not a diagnostic tool. It's just a general assessment for your information. So if you're in a low stress area, awesome, 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 awesome. Keep it up. Make a note of how you do that. Share your secrets with people for money. I don't know. If you're doing really well at something, keep doing it. If you're in a higher area of the score, you really want to pay attention to those questions you said yes to and think about those when we're walking through this training. It's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean it's undoable. It just means you want to make sure and pay attention to that. So, way to go, 100%. So I said some of those questions are kind of funny. We talked about food already. The first one, do you neglect your diet? Not, are you always on a diet, but do you let your good, healthy eating habits completely fall away when you're out of routine, right? And that is almost required for holiday season, right? It's different food. It's more food. All of our parties are center around, centered around that. It's potluck constantly. So there are a lot of ones that are hard not to say yes to during the holiday season. But if we talk about what we'll talk about later, keeping everything going in the background, you're going to put yourself in a better position. So... You generally have an idea of where you are. We talked about stress being a natural part of life. We have to accept that it is a fact. And also, whew, if we know it's coming, that means we can prepare for it. It's a little less unknown. It's a little less freaky. So we don't want to have a goal of being stress-free because that's kind of a misleading term. If we just decided that stress is kind of everywhere, kind of unavoidable, we just need a plan for it, then stress-free is a really unrealistic goal. Uh, and if you're thinking you should be stress-free, then every time you're not, you might be beating yourself up a little bit for feeling stress, which is normal and natural. So you don't want to have to be stress-free. You want to find more effective ways to manage and channel those stressors and stress. It usually pops out in a couple of different ways. Uh, a lot of times people can easily tell me, oh yeah, when I get stressed, I... I, every, I say, everyone opened their mouth because they knew how to fill in that blank for themselves. Everyone knows kind of some big, big two or three, oh, I do this, I do this, I can tell. But there's a lot of different things that get, uh, that increase, or you see increase or decrease that come in a couple of different ways you may not realize are connected to stress. So I want you to think about you, but also the people in your house closest to you that you're doing all of this holiday planning and change and handling with, because you want to be able to know what they are in yourself. You also want to be able to pick up on those things in your spouse, partner, sister, brother, children, especially a lot of times behavioral symptoms in children is just a response to stress natural, normal, transitional stress. It's the same when they get wound up having to go to middle school for the first time. All of a sudden there's some behavior that's new. It's because it's a new change. It's stress. It's different. So what are some examples of emotional um, symptoms of stress? Nail biting. Mm, I'm going to categorize that one as physical, but I like where you are at. Someone said crying earlier, tearfulness, feeling sad, kind of suddenly, any more um, rapid switch in emotions if you're just kind of moving a little faster through those. Uh, I know any time of the year if I watch Remember the Titans it's going to jerk a tear but especially in a time of high stress you just flip through the channel and see it on the God and it's just so I know that about myself so I can watch out for it. That's handy for me because then I go oh that's what that is. I need to make an adjustment for it. So what's some other emotional examples? Look, you have a cheat sheet in front of you. <laughs> Quick to anger. Well, that was covered in a couple of those stress test questions. More irritable, less patient, a little more likely to be frustrated. 
yeah, that makes sense because if we're stressed, if we're stressed, our, our fuse is shorter. Okay, so, oh yeah, hey, we got almost all those. Good job, everyone. All right. Okay, um, what about cognitive? <laughs> Decrease in concentration. That's a big one. Motivation, productivity related pieces, especially at work, often are because your mind is elsewhere planning for the seven errands you have to do afterwards to make sure that everything is perfect at home because you're holding yourself to a perfect standard. And we'll touch on that later. But yeah, a lot of times it's things like that. And then you get in that cycle again. You're at work or you're at home and you can't get what you want to get done. And then you start beating up yourself a little bit and feeling bad because you can't get things done when really we just need a little bit different of a plan or approach or stress management to put you back in the position you normally are to do well. Um, so it's easy to kind of, with cognitive especially, start beating yourself up about it because it seems very like, this is me, this is all my fault. It's all my fault. Like, I'm responsible for everything. That's a lot to hold on your shoulders, especially if you're constantly trying to figure out how you're going to make everything go together. So, physical, we touched on nail biting. Oh, thank you. Um, fidgety kind of habits like that, they go into that physical behavioral, if that makes sense, but like then feeling more fidgety um, versus playing it out. A lot of times, headaches. If any, has anyone ever had a tension headache? Oh, yes, a popular question. Okay, it was almost 100%. Yeah, what happens when you are stressed? You are tense. You are literally tense. Your back, your shoulders, your neck, your head. You may need to have some stretches that you do that you know can loosen those up because if you are having to crunch over a project or get into a screen or that's, you know, going to be your work week, you want to have some things to offset that because you know that makes it harder for you and you know then you are harder have a harder time concentrating and then we get into that fun cycle of Allison why aren't you doing better at this when really it's recognition of I need a little bit different approach this week or this month um, and a lot of times I was to say if anyone's ever had semblance to an anxiety or panic attack that hits home right there um, and it's hard to get out of that again especially if you're sitting there beating yourself up or holding yourself to kind of a really tough high comparison standard here we go with our behavioral. And you know what's eating and drinking? Isn't that great? We, we already said that is what every holiday party is centered around. You are put in situations where you are going to be doing that more often. You certainly want to remember to pace yourself and maintain a balance there, but that doesn't mean that you can't find a way to enjoy what you are doing with the people you are doing. Um, increase and decrease in eating are both on there, which is kind of funny because people sometimes go one way or the other, sometimes both. I feel like sometimes it's both. <laughs> um, so it's just, again, these are things you may do sometimes if you find that those are increasing instead of immediately kicking yourself, stop, take a step back and look around and think, oh, well, there are four more things on my plate this month. I, maybe that is why I keep reaching for this or doing this. This is when we tend to get a little more vicey um, so if that is something that is coming up, maybe take a step back, evaluate that stress and the stress management because that is what you're turning to as a stress management tool. You just may not realize that that is a skill you have put in place for yourself. So if you know roughly how stressed you are or what your main concerns are, which areas, and you've thought about which of these symptoms of stress play out for you and your family so you can recognize them better. Great, moving along swimmingly. Uh, you want to talk, think about how you can mediate that stress, and that's what I mentioned earlier. If something is going to be stressful, if we know something is coming, you want to have a different plan for that. So that's where the predictability comes in. What happens every year that always drives you crazy? What is difficult every year? Which process, which party, which gathering, which group, which person to buy for, which of those things are always seemingly difficult for you? It's always the thing that we're having a relationship argument over. It's always the thing that we can't quite sync up with the kids or with these cousins. Think about those things more thoroughly. Talk them through with the person you're doing it with and see if you can come up with a different approach than the year before. At the worst, it doesn't work and it's the same as it was at the most it gets slightly or significantly better 
because at least you feel like you have made an effort, tried something differently, you might feel a little more empowered if you've tried a different strategy and seen success or not success, but you took a much more active role in trying to manage and channel that stress more effectively. So if there are ways to predict big, small, real, perceived issues, try, what, try to mediate those on the front end as much as possible. While you're thinking that through, you have to remember what is in and out of your control. And that is really hard, especially with family members that are tied in with emotion, that are all trying to schedule on a group text, that can't get together for the life of them. So you have to remember what is in and out of your control. What is in your control? Yeah, short list, <laughs> short, short list. And that is both freaky and comforting. Huh. Oh my gosh, okay, I don't, I don't have to try to control anyone else or their behavior or actions. I can try to influence. I can put what I need to put out there and again, put the best predictable plan in place. But can I get comfortable with the idea of, whew, that, that's out of my control. I can, that's out of my control. There are some things at holidays always gonna be. Traffic, weather, other people's behavior, like how your family is going to act when they get into your home or receive you into theirs. I don't know. You don't know what you're going to walk into the door to sometimes, but if you know where you have control and where you don't, there is some freedom in recognition of that because you can let go of some of that other feeling like you have to do other things that are, again, very high standard and possibly impossible. So you want to make sure that you recognize what's in and out of your control in those situations, put in good plans for the stuff you can affect, have a backup plan and then take a breath and step back because that's about the most we can ask from any living human. I mean, really, that's all that can be done and that's okay. It's great. That's a very doable thing all of a sudden when we break it down that small. I'm not trying to minimize how difficult some of this can be. I'm trying to suggest this approach. So social support, family, social, outside, inside, work, personal, where are your support outlets? What do you have to accomplish with who? What can be delegated? Where can the load be spread? If you can, do it. If not, that's when we get into that predictable in and out of control situation where we need to run it back through and have a more specific plan, especially if you know it's gonna be a problem. And then self-awareness is the big piece. So can you realize when you're stressed, can you recognize those different signs, symptoms in yourself and in the people around you and then put in a coping skill or different plan or adjustment to account for that. Do you know when you need self-care? Do you know when you need to make sure you are taken care of? Question, if you are not taking care of yourself, who can you then take care of? Not for very long anyway. I feel like you, you guys are probably power throughers. Y'all could probably power through for a couple of days just based on pure grit awesome but even the best power through or hits a wall somewhere if they're not being taken care of if their basic needs are not being met and so it does put you in a better position if you can maintain healthy self-care habits throughout the do's and don'ts list on the handout one of them is don't don't quit your workout routine. Don't stop doing like relaxing things that are good and helpful for you. If there's something important in your regular routine, in your self-care and making sure that you feel ready to take on the power through, then you want to see what you can do to maintain that as best as possible. No, you don't have to go to the gym on Christmas day. Like let's not be crazy, but you don't want to lose this whole month, week, chunk of time you will feel off if you don't know why it may be because you got off of some of your very good coping skills and routines so make sure you have that in your back pocket one of the big things is expectations for the holiday um, I know that sounds sounds weird to say that you may want to lower your expectations and I don't mean that in a bad way I mean that things happen on a spectrum in a bell curve Things are not usually the best ever or the worst ever. They're usually in this very happy, comfortable, safe, joyful, lots of good average medium. 
And that's a good thing because you don't have to hit an unrealistic expectation and you don't have to worry about it being the worst ever. You're going to fall in the bell curve and that's good and that's okay. But you want to make sure that you and your family have a realistic expectation of what is going to occur and what's going to go on. Along those lines, you have to understand the limitations of your time and that's when we kick back to the you have to know when you've had enough, you have to know what can fit in a 24 hour day, and you have to include sleep in that. Um, and so there, those things have to be kind of accounted for when you're making this plan, when you're trying to get some predictability and affect what's in your control with the people around you. You wanna make sure you plan your spending and stick to it. I'm not gonna harp on that part too much because we've got a professional in the room that's gonna talk more about it, but you wanna make sure that that is something you have thought through and have an idea for. Um, it doesn't mean it has to be perfect. It means that you need to, like we said about everything, have some sort of plan have at least one backup, and then be able to take a breath and know you're gonna have to be flexible through the holiday season. And then of course, take care of yourself. It's gonna be on like four more slides. I can't say it enough. It's very important. So, oh, I skipped ahead. Are your expectations realistic? Does that need to be reviewed differently? Do you understand what will work? Are you willing to delegate, divide and conquer, share some of that load. Because some of it is, you know you're gonna do it better. You know that you are gonna do it better than other people might do. So you may have to change your expectations there of, if I wanna get all this done, I have to say that 90% is fine and acceptable even though I would've done 100. I don't know you guys, you just, again, if you're power throughers, you're go-getters, like, I get that. And again, that could be in your control if you're the one taking care of it and you have to get comfortable letting it out of your control if you're going to delegate. So it is a practice habit that takes some time to get used to, but it's certainly worth doing if you haven't before. I'm going to skip this one. He's got this later. I will say, if you haven't been on our website, we did just relaunch the like interface, so it's really cute. And I know that's an odd word to say about a website, but it is and it's very user friendly. And in addition to the resources you have through Orion, you have uh, a lot of assessments, calculators, budget forms, tax forms. So there's just a lot of documents and where to get started and how to's and just easy digestible information back there. So if you do want additional resources for that, the login code is SWEAP, Southwest EAP, easy to remember, SWEAP. So I told you I was gonna tell you to take care of yourself. <coughs> you have to be able to listen to your body. Like I said earlier, Everyone was ready to fill in the blank when I said, when I feel stressed, I blah. We know we can do those. I highly encourage you to go through those columns later and make a tick mark by any that you've experienced in this week or this month so far and try to decide, okay, was this that day? Because it was just that day because that's when all of those things were due and the kids had this and this. Or is this been happening for a week or two ramping up and it's maybe becoming a pattern that I want to address before December 24th. I don't know. So um, do's and don'ts, I'm going to let you read those. Essentially, do remember that there are very important things to get out of this season and there is not uh, a crazy expectation of you. If you are present with your family, if you are mindful, if you put thought and creativity into what you're doing, it will be noticed and it will be well received. And those are the memories that people remember from childhood is the warm and the what we did afterwards, not just what a gift was, not just one thing. It's the what we then did with four cousins with that. It's the, those special things. So you wanna make sure that you're in a position where you can really be in the moment and feel the joy of the season without feeling this other stuff hang over your head. So it takes a little practice. I highly encourage you, like I said, to go through this yourself and with the person who is helping you most with this season or the couple of people, just to try to go through some of these questions and say, what can we get more predictable with? What can we do? Uh, where can we get some movement so that everyone can be in a pretty good position to, um, like I said, get all of that joy. So you have your do's and don'ts on your handout. Um, but yeah, just that's, that's this. For, remember, we are a resource. Please take care of yourselves and have an excellent you know, holiday and new year and all of that jazz. So cool. All right. Thank you. All right.
Everybody got a handout? Everybody, everybody got a pen? Need a pen? Who needs a pen? Anybody? I have pens here. I'll just throw them out. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Pen, pen, pen. Anybody need a pen? You guys got a pen? Everybody good? All right. How are y'all doing? Did you enjoy that last session? That's, that's pretty beneficial stuff. You know, the thing is with stress, stress will kill you, in case you didn't know. Stress will absolutely put you six foot under. So, uh, you know, dealing with stress, especially during this time, is very beneficial. Uh, we're going to talk about the other side of the stress gambit here. We're going to talk about the money side. And as soon as I say money or budgeting or what, oh, when I say the word budget, how does it make you feel? <sighs> Right? Ah, damn, why do we want to talk about that? Well, you're just the person I wanted to talk to. So this is great. Um, we're going to be following through. Uh, I, everybody should have a handout, so we're going to be kind of going through uh, that. Um, one of the things that I want everyone to do, because I asked you if you had a pen, everybody got a pen, everybody got a piece of paper. I want you to write this date down, and I want you to follow me. Write this date down. Everybody ready? December 25th, 5th, 25. December 25. Now, I say, well, Tim, I know what that date is, but, yeah, but I kind of beg to differ a little bit. You might or you might not. This date is interesting. This date actually comes around every single year. This date happens, it'll happen this year, in just a couple of weeks. This date will happen next year. This date will actually happen the year after that. And this date will actually happen 20 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, 500 years from now. This date is really interesting. This date actually hits the same time every single year. But we don't plan for it. We don't, we, don't, we don't think about that. Here's another interesting thing. So this thing called your birthday, or your child's birthday, or a husband, or a wife's birthday, or whomever's birthday, did you know that it also happens the same time every year as well? I don't know, right? Just, right? Yeah, it does. It happens. So, so, so it's funny. We talk about it. We laugh. We kid. We joke. But am I lying? No. Happens the same time every single year. The deal is we just don't plan for it. Right? Thus, a budget. Um, money is not hard. Money in planning for money and doing different things. Budgeting is not difficult. How many of y'all in here? How many of y'all can add two plus two? Yeah. How about uh, one minus four? Everybody got that too, right? You got budgeting whooped. I don't even know why I'm even here. <laughs> budgeting really is that simple. We, we make it this huge thing, but it's not. Do you want to know what the huge thing is? Everybody do like this right here. Okay, and then your, 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 your neighbor sitting next to you, Point at them, too. That's it. Budgeting's not difficult. It's pretty simple. Here's what budgeting is in a nutshell. It's making a plan. If you look at your, at your handout here, spending plans, that's what, that's what it is. It's a, it's a plan. Now, how many of y'all also sometimes have plans that don't actually work out? <laughs> right? Yeah, me too. Sometimes the plan just doesn't work out. However, budgeting is just simply a plan. It's a blueprint. It's the direction on which way are we going, which also leads me to this, and you're not going to find this in the handout. But here's, here's another little tidbit I want to throw at you. Maybe, maybe, 
It could be that the reason budgeting is such an issue and it becomes such a stress is because maybe we don't know where we're going. That could be an issue. See, here's the deal. I can sit with you, and I have. I've counseled people for years. But here's the deal. We can talk about money. We can talk about budgeting. We can talk about the best plans in the world. But at the end of the day, if you don't know where you're going or what you're wanting to accomplish or you don't have goals in mind, what good is that plan going to do you? Because let me go, I'm going to throw this at you. We just talked about stress. When stress happens, guess what the first thing is is going out the back door? The budget. That's it. Why? Because I need something to make me feel better. And a budget feels restraining. It feels confining. I don't like it. And so the first thing that goes, ah, I'm out of that. But here's the deal. So, so we're, we're talking about spending plans. We talked about kind of what it is. It's a road map. I mean, it's something that, that, that people uh, put them, you know, create to give themselves a financial border, if you will. Okay? So we know where we're going. We know what we want, what we want to accomplish. And, and that's, that's basically all a, all a budget is. What is it for? It's just it's something that's going to get us. It's, it's actually the vehicle that can take you to what your real hopes and dreams, aspirations, this is the vehicle that gets you there. I've talked to people before, and I actually had a lady several years ago, I sat in a class of mine, and she said, uh, I, well, she sat in a class, afterwards she comes up to me, she said, Tim, she said, uh, I just want you to know, she said, uh, me and my husband actually just talked last night when we were thinking about filing bankruptcy. I said, well, I hate to hear that. She said, I know. Just, man, we've got so much, and we don't know what to do. But she said, man, after hearing this, I really kind of, I'm starting to kind of get an idea that this thing is maybe not as big of a monster as what I've been painting it out to be. Maybe, maybe I can control this thing. I said, you know what? I would at least try to give it a shot. Go home tonight. Talk to husband. Try to figure it out. Didn't see her for a couple of months, and uh, she actually came to my office, found me, came to my office about three months later. She said, hey, I, I, they called me and said, Tim, there's a lady here that wants to talk to you. I went out and said, hey, how you doing? She said, I, I don't know if you remember me. I said, yeah, I remember you. She said, well, I actually went home and talked to my husband. She said, I took what you, what you were saying, and she said, it made sense. It actually made sense this time. She said, you know what? Man, we've already been working toward this thing. We created a budget. We've got goals in mind. We already know what we want to accomplish. And, and so we've got such and such goals that we want to accomplish over the next month and then, and then over the next five months and then over the next year. And, and she said, that's as far as we've gotten. But, hey, we're making progress. And we can actually see we don't have to file bankruptcy. Great. What's the difference? What's the difference between before the class and after the class? Learned something. She, here's what they learned. Goals are a powerful thing. Very powerful. It's amazing when a person has something in mind that they want to do, there's not much that will stop them. Not much. It's, this thing right here is our biggest weapon. It's our biggest weapon, but it can also be our biggest hindrance. So, so, so that's what a spending plan is. Uh, the, on page number two, benefits of a spending plan. You can put aside money for, saving, uh, for savings goals. There's a thought. <laughs> Average American don't do that, I can tell you. We could, we could talk about this all day long. Uh, prepare for regular expenses. Well, there's a thought. Prepare for unexpected expenses. How many of y'all have, uh, have an emergency fund? Okay, a couple of us. You know, some people I've talked to, they're like, well, yeah, I've got an emergency fund. It's this thing called Visa, and it's made by Citibank. <laughs> and it's a, <laughs> no, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. But here's the interesting thing, and I want you to think about this. So if that is your spending plan, or that's your emergency fund, that's your, 
net, your safety net, right? Is that thing called a visa that's hanging out in your purse or your back wallet? Let me go ahead and throw this at you. So if you're telling me that that is your safety net, you don't have another dime that you could put back for savings. What are you going to do when you have to use Mr. Visa on those tires or the transmission or whatever it is? And then about 30 to 45 days from that point, you will get something called a statement from them because that money is not free. And so you will receive a statement in the mail and they will say, your minimum monthly payment this month is $25. You going to pay it? You are? Yeah, you will, for the most part. Yeah, you're going to pay it. Oh, gone it. I got that stupid bill in there. I mean, well, let me write them a check, get that done. So what you're telling me is you just put, you just, you, you, you're willing to give them $25 on top of interest paid. Huh? So you're willing to give them that $25 for the month, but you're telling me you don't have it to, to put back in the bank account. You, do you see, are y'all, are y'all painting this picture with me? Do you see where we, where we go a lot of times in our head and our heart? Yeah. It's, it's all a mindset. This right here. This is the problem. We got to change this. Sometimes money is not the problem. Sometimes it is. Absolutely. But many times it's not. I know because I've talked to folks, counseled them. I know many times. You got to change this. So that's some of the benefits. Consequences. What happens when you don't have a plan? Ah, that is where we get in trouble. So we don't have a plan. Life happens. And how many of y'all, you ever seen that commercial? The commercial, I don't know, what is that? A, a Geico or some kind of commercial, you know, or, you know, this lady wakes up, she sits down at her table and she's got a you know, repair, auto repair guy sitting across from her over here and then a boss or something sitting over here and he's going, okay, hey, uh, just today, just so you could write this down. I'm gonna, your tire's gonna blow today at three o'clock in the afternoon. You go and you're on your way to pick up your kids. So if you could just jot that down on the calendar, I'd greatly appreciate it, right? Life happens. You, sometimes it just hits you out of the blue. Sometimes you just don't, you don't know. And, and so this is why creating a budget, having a blueprint, which is all this thing is, this is why it is so important. So we can also plan for those things. So, so some of the consequences, look at this on page two, middle of it. Lack of a savings plan means wasted money and stress. Do you want to know what, what the leading cause of divorce is right now in the United States? Uh-huh. Cheating. That's what a lot of folk, folk think. Right? That's, what, that's what, I mean, that's true. Most people think, oh, it's, it's a difference. Here, so, so somebody's cheated on somebody or somebody, right? Finances. Finances. That's what she was talking about. It's, look, it creates so much pressure and stress. It's just like she was talking earlier. It's, you, you, you have this mindset of everything is a pressure. Everything is a stress. And here's, a, here's the great thing about a budget. A budget actually can, can be very freeing because here's the deal. How many of y'all, and I can say this because I've been there, how many of you have ever laid in bed at night and thought, man, I wonder how I'm going to make that payment on the electric bill? <laughs> God, I don't know how in the world you're going to work this out, but I've got an auto payment due tomorrow, and I, I'm out of money. The mortgage payment, the rent, you name it, whatever, the weight is of that financial weight. So you lay in bed, and this is such a stress and a pressure, and you wonder why you don't sleep well at night. Uh, so, so you sit and you, you worry, and this thing is such a pressure, such a stress, you can't even hardly breathe. And we wonder why we're in the shape we're in sometimes. Let me tell you something. Having a budget, having a blueprint, knowing where every single penny is going will free you up. Here's the deal. Let me throw this at you. You might want to write this down. You were never designed to be a slave to the dollar. You weren't designed that way. You were designed to tell the dollar what to do for you. That's it. Well, Tim, you just don't understand. Well, no, I do understand. Hey, I've been there. I get it. Been there. Grab me some time. I'll tell you my story. Yeah, I get it. But you know what? 
here's what I found. I can choose to be a slave to the dollar, or I can choose to be an employer of the dollar and say, dollar, here's what you're going to do for me today. Budget, blueprint, plan. Got it? Makes sense? Um, let's look at, uh, look at the next page, page three. Before creating a spending plan, track your spending. Oh, that's ugly. Ah, uh, you want to know something real ugly to do? Try that one. I promise you, you won't like it. <laughs> you're actually going to hate it. You, here's what you're going to find. I'll just go ahead and help you out. You're going to say, well, you're going to do this one day, and then you're going to think, wow, Tim, he's like a psychic or something. You don't know, eat in it. No, just because I know people. Here's what we do. How many of y'all eat out? Yeah, I tell you, here's, a, here's an interesting little thing you ought to do sometime. <laughs> Get your statement in the mail or pull it up online. And for a whole month, for the, the previous month, I want you to go through there and check, put a check mark beside every little, every spot you went and ate out. McDonald's, Taco Bell, whatever the case is. And you, you, you check all these off, all right? And then here's what I want you to do. I want you to, to add them up. And then here's what I want you to do. Um, I want you to grab a box of Kleenex because you're going to need it. Um, and, and, and I want you to sit, and I want that to really soak in. It's amazing how much money we spend just eating out. Why? It's easy. It's convenient. It's whatever. I don't have a plan. Let's, it's a free-for-all. Um, and you wonder why our finances are in the shape they're in. Okay. Might have to brown bag it every now and then. It's okay. So, so you, you want to, also this will help you have a better idea where your dollar amount should be making progress in your budget. And so, so you know, there's different things like this. There's a lot of different things we can do. We'll talk about some of that. So let's talk about uh, how, do, how, do you, how do you develop this thing? So how do you, where do you start? Well, we already figured out a while ago that we can add 2 plus 2, and we know what 1 minus 4 is. So we're, we're, we're on a start. Okay, there's your start. Um, I'll tell you what I would do um, is assess it. Where are you at? Taking a look at what you take, printing off a statement from previous month, and let's just take a look at where we're at. Where's all of our money going? Um, there's so many different tools. There's things that's on on the website mentioned before, um, if you're a member at Orion, if you, if you log into your account, account, we actually have tools there as well that you can see, and it's just budgeting tools. You can see where the money's going, whether it's going in housing or whether it's going in utilities or whatever. So, so it gives you a little pie chart. You can see everything. So you can kind of get an idea of where this money, where the majority of your money's going. That's a start. So assess where you're at. Um, and then look at that. Number two, set personal financial goals. You will not, I repeat, please write this down, because this is something also that you need to kind of, if you're, if you're budgeting for money reasons only, you're doing it for the wrong reason. You say, well, what do you mean, Tim? That's, I thought that's what the whole, this whole thing is about, is about money. Nah. We just talked about goals. Where are you going? If you're, if you're money driven, so if you're saying, well, Tim, no, the only reason I budget is for money, then you are still a slave to the dollar. We need to change that mindset. Have a plan. Where are you going? What do you want to accomplish? Did you know, I, I, there was a lady, I went and, and taught this several years ago at, at Arkansas State Police Department. And there was this lady that come in, and she, she was one of those ladies that, you know, I got, I got, I got, these state troopers in here, right? Guns, bulletproof vest, eight foot tall and just mean, big, right? <laughs> this little lady comes in about four foot none. She sits on the front row. And when she come in, I mean, them dudes hushed. That's when I was like, ah, boy, whew, this ought to be interesting. <laughs> See how this goes. Taught the class. I always ask, hey, is there any questions, thoughts, concerns, ideas? All these hands shot up. When her hand shot up, everybody else's hand went down. <laughs> I thought, oh, well, I'm in for it now. I said, yes, ma'am. 
She said, young man, for the first time in 65 years, this mess actually makes sense, except she didn't say mess. <laughs> she used another choice word. <laughs> I will not repeat. And uh, she said, for the first time, this actually makes sense. She said, I've, I've read books. I've listened to this thing. She said, you know what? I was one of those people. I've worked for the state for over 35 years. Every morning the alarm goes off, and because and I, I gave the analogy that if you're, the, you're that person that's kind of in that mundane drive, you know, where you just, you, everything's on overdrive or on, on, on autopilot. You're just, you're just going through the motions at this point. You know, alarm goes off, you get snoozed 10 times, you take the shower, you get out of the shower, you put your makeup on, do your hair, put your clothes on, you go to go drive to work, same direction to work, to, you know, as you have all the rest of 30 years. And so, and so you're in this mundane drive. She said, you know, that's me. And she said, you know what, um, I, I, I'm, I, I see an issue here. And she said, you know what, this makes sense. I said, great, we talked a little more. I went back about four or five months later for a follow-up. And I walked past this lady in the hall, and uh, I heard her stop and say, well, you're not even going to say hi. I turned around. I said, ma'am, I'm so sorry. I said, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not placing you, and I'm normally pretty good with faces. And I said, I'm so sorry. Where do I know you from? She said, you don't even know who I am, do you? And I said, no, ma'am, I'm sorry. She said, I was the lady that was in your class about five or six months ago. You remember me? I was the one that told you I'd... For the first time, it actually made sense, and I told you about some of these things. She said, well, you want to know a little secret? I said, what's that? She said, I was actually looking to die here. When I came to your class, this is what I saw, myself being here for the rest of my life. But she said, actually, she said, after your class, I thought, you know what? You're right. She said, I, there's things that I've always wanted to do ever since I was a little girl. She said, one of them was quilting. She said, I've actually started making quilts again. She said, I've actually made so many quilts, and I'm actually doing so well now. I've got these quilts. I've got people that's buying quilts before I've even got them made. She said, so I'm actually looking. I'm going to be able to retire within the next six months. I've already put in my paperwork. Everything's a done deal. So in six months, I'm retiring and going to making quilts full time. She actually looked totally different. Didn't even know her. Had no idea who she was. Her whole physical appearance had changed. Why? <laughs> Stress come off. Ah, I got goals now. I can live again. This is what a budget does for you. Okay? It's not necessarily a bad thing. Create a budget for fixed and variable expenses based on projected income. Monitor current spending patterns. Again, it's kind of what we talked about. Compare budget, uh, actually money spent. So we're looking at where's your money going? Progress made, your budget amount. Here's the thing. You, you might create a budget now, but I can promise you, you're probably going to have to revamp it a few times. Budgets change, they kind of evolve. As, as your goals change and as life changes, you might have to kind of make some adjustments and it's okay. Budget vocabulary, we, we've kind of hit on some of these things. Uh, I'll let you read those. Pretty self-explanatory, earned income, unearned income. Pay yourself first, there's a thought. We don't do that. It's kind of like what I was talking about before. Um, fixed expenses, variable expenses, um, negative cash flow. Now, here's, a, here's something that's interesting. So when you're going through this, you could get discouraged. You might see that instead of going this way, you're looking, you've done your budget, and now we're kind of going, we're in the negative here. That means some things have to change. Something has to change. Income has to go up or expenses have to go down. You've got to figure that out. Um, every person's different. There is no set rules or guidelines on doing this. this. Every person's different. Your goals are different. Your thoughts are different. You do different things. Everybody's got different talents and different. So everybody's totally different. So exactly how you get out of that, that's up to you. But look at this. To reduce negative cash flow, you can uh, do some comparison shopping. Use coupons. Uh, buy items on sale. You don't have to have, you know, the, the shirt of that pair of jeans that's on the front aisle. They want you to buy that stuff. If I was running Dillard's, I'd want you to buy that stuff too. That just means you're lining my pockets a little more. Now, I'll be honest with my wife, I drive her nuts. I don't do that. I go, as soon as I walk into a store, I got people, how you doing? You want to look at these? I'm like, nope, I don't even want to talk to you. I'm going to the clearance. <laughs> My wife's like, babe, but this is kind of, this is real nice. I don't care. I don't want it. I'm going to go back here. What if I can find the same thing looks just like it? I can buy them back there for a quarter of the price. 
Um, shopping at thrift stores, using frequent shopper cards. So there's a, there's a lot of different things that you can do to, to kind of help your situation. Now we talked about this uh, on page, top of page five here, increase income. We got Uber down there. That's a big thing right now. There's a lot of people actually doing that right now. There's a lot of folks. They like quit their, you know, or they get off from the day job and they start the other job and that's Uber. So there's a lot of folks actually doing that right now. You can make a little, little extra income that way. Um, just depends. I've got a friend of mine who's really good at woodworking. So you know what he does? He gets off work, he comes home, he does what he likes. He puts little, he makes tables, he does beds, he does all kind of stuff and he sells it. Um, so that's a little that way. Um, there's some other examples there. Yard work, real estate, doing hair, nails, babysitting, all kind of fun stuff. So here's, here's uh, the next slide there, guidelines for a budget. Now these are guidelines, okay? This is not the recipe for success, so to speak because here's the deal. Chances are you might not fall in one of these categories. You might not be able to do, you might not be able to do 30%, only 30% in housing utilities. Depends on what the utilities look like. Okay, so just depends. This is just a guideline, just to kind of give you an idea of where it kind of should be. Okay, so don't, don't feel like, oh no, I can't do that. Well, you might not do 10% in savings and investing. Can you do 5%? Can you do 2%? I mean, heck, 1% is better than no percent. So try it. you got to do something. Um, other tools to help in budgeting, an envelope system, computer programs. Uh, the, the young lady before just mentioned that, that they've got things and tools on their website. We also have things and tools on our website. And we, you can actually talk to one of us. We can help you with some things as well. Paper tracking. Envelope system. There's an interesting one. That's one I actually kind of like that one. That, that one helps me out a lot. I like being able to see it. I got an envelope, it's got money in it, and that envelope says this is for food for the week. All right, good. So I, I am not, you know, you can't rob from Peter to pay Paul. You can't take out a gas money to throw it over here in food because you spent too much. That's not sticking to the budget, all right? So, so yeah. What I do is I've got a little candy box, just wooden candies or whatever. When I go somewhere, I just put it in Mm -hmm. Spend it and I get a five back. I put the five back and I put it in my little candy box. Mm -hmm. So every time I get a five, I put it back. Yeah. And I try not to spend it and I've got a whole stack of five. Hey, let me tell you something. That's a great idea too. I'll tell you something else too, which will go with that. I've known, and I've actually done this. How many of y'all love carrying loose change in your, in your purse or in your pocket? I don't. I hate it. So what I do is when I get home, I dump it into a little thing that we keep at the door. Right? And so... At the end of the month, or whenever it gets full, well, I have the kids, we get in the living room, we dump it out, and we're separating it all out, and banding it up, or rolling it up. Hey, look, I, I'll be honest, one year, um, our air conditioner kind of needed some servicing. I didn't have the extra money. So guess what I did? I went to this thing. I dump it out, we put it all together. Do you know I had just enough money out of that loose change to, to pay for my air conditioning service bill? Isn't that cool? Now, it wouldn't have been there if it had just been loose and just rolling around everywhere. So keep it together. There's all sorts of things you can do. Remember this. Remember this. Mid-page mid six. Budgets uh, can and should change from time to time. After one month of budgeting, reevaluate it, make changes as necessary. We've talked about that. Plan for large purchases. There's a thought. You know, cars on the ring, you know, on the blink, you know, hey, it's 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 coming due. Cars about to go kaput. You might want to start planning for it. You might want to start putting some money back. You know, there's a you might have to have a down payment or or hey, you might be able to put a good chunk of change down on it to keep your payments good and low. All right, so there's there's always things to do there. Um, last but not least, financial independence is achieved by reducing spending, earning more, saving more, and avoiding negative cash flow. That's the main point here. Uh, we want to we want to alleviate that negative cash flow thing. A spending plan is a tool to assist one in tracking and monitoring monitoring income expenses and negative uh, avoiding ne negative cash flow. That here's the deal. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, budgeting is simply this. It's a plan. Know where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, grab a piece of piece of paper and a pencil and a nice hot cup of coffee. 
sit down one <laughs> night and just uh, what I call throw up on paper. Figure out where you're going. What are you, what are you trying to achieve? Throw that down on paper. You might be surprised at what you find. Thank you guys very much.